Well, hey everybody, how's it going? Got an old Chevy here I'm going to take a look at and see if we can't get it running again. Story on this, it was uh, parked while it was still running about 10 years ago. Actually, I was told that two years ago, so it's been sitting for about 12 years. Um, and I've already tried putting power to it before, brought up a couple batteries. The starter didn't, uh, didn't make a single bit of noise. The lights on the dash didn't even dim, so I don't think... Uh, I don't think anything's happening with that, so I'm going to start with the starter, see if we can just get it to turn over. Got a missing radiator hose, I borrowed that and chopped it up to put onto the Kubota. It's going to be a few things to replace. The main goal right now is just to get to that starter and uh, try to get it to turn over. Sure it's not all milky. Looks pretty good. All right, got power hooked up. Let's turn the key and see what happens. nothing. However, lights aren't lighting up this time. First time I tried this was about a year ago. I at least got some lights on the dash. Now there's nothing. There it goes. It's had a bad connection. All right. Now we've got uh, lights on the dash. I like these older Chevys, S stuff like this, their heating controls. Okay, and that's probably going to do nothing from what I remember. Ooh, actually, I heard something go there. Maybe we just need to break loose the... See if we could spin the motor. And I'll see if I can't help it to spin by pulling these plugs. Maybe spray a little WD in there. Take a look at one of these plugs and see what we got. These cords are are done. They're just no matter what I do, they're just breaking. These uh, spark plug wires. Let's see what we got here. All black and I'm seeing a little bit of moisture. Or is that just sparkly carbon? An air box. It's a kind of weird air box thing. Bee nests. Uh, throttle body injection. 
little better on fuel, a little harder to work on. I like them though. They're kind of cool. All right, got a little WD-40 sprayed in each cylinder. Gonna leave the spark plugs out so they don't build up pressure and let the motor uh, spin over more freely. And uh, let's just, yeah, see if it will turn over on its own. If that starter, uh, if that still doesn't go, I might go down here since I took off this, um, this upper fan shroud. I can get in here and put a wrench on that crank pulley and see if I can't just turn that by hand. But. Get some power back on this and see what happens. All right, let's see if I can't turn this by hand. quarter inch socket on a breaker bar. Oh, there we go. Oh, now we're taking off the crank. That's not good. Oh, this motor is definitely not turning too easy. All sorts of crusties on this thing. This island pulley just has this big old chunk of rust gobbed up there. The belt just took a piece of the pulley with it. The serpentine there. Oh my gosh. Well, I say that I freed that up pretty good. Good enough to see if that starter works. Let's try that again. All right. That is to some degree good news. Oh, what's going on now? Something popped off. Or did it about to snap? Oh. Water pump pulley is loose now. It's all right. Got a new belt anyway. If this works. All right. Spark plugs are put back in. All the spark plug wires that I could put back on, I did. A lot of them, uh, uh, I think maybe almost half of them broke, trying to get them out. So these first two, and then maybe one on the other side, uh, snapped the connector off. So those are just kind of shoved back on. Should be enough to get a, to 
get the piston to fire, probably won't run very good. Also, these back two spark plug wires I got mixed up with before I labeled them, so those might be swapped around. But I think we should be good enough to spray some starting fluid or just pour some gas in there and see if it'll start. These are old dead RV batteries, they're just not really working out too well. the same response out of a, a new battery with lots of amperage. So I'm thinking it's the connection possibly on these or possibly down at the starter. I did move the ground from the block here over to the actual battery terminal. I think that might be a little better connection. It's just kind of hard to pinch around this rubber. I do love these. Uh, my Chevy Beauville had one of these. A 97 Chevy Beauville. Awesome. This little gym thing there. Alright, let's see how that does with a little bit better connection there. Alright, got a little more direct connection here without a long pair of jumper cables in between the battery and the truck. Just got those short uh, battery cables clipped in there. I wasn't really expecting this to start, but holy that! Just ran. Even just for a little bit. I'll put a big old smile on my face. A little more food for my for my Chevy here. Or for this Chevy. It's not my Chevy. running until I get figured out uh, um, I need to get the old fuel out of this the old varnish it's probably varnished by now Yeah. 
I think I got these bug wires crossed. Let's go ahead and pull this fuel line, see if I can't get anything coming out. Alright, I got a 5 8 inch line wrench here to take this off. Let's uh, squirt a little WD on there. Wrenchy ring. See if the pump's even still working. <laughs> Alright, I got those two plug wires switched around, so let's see if that runs any better. Also could be running bad since it's got torn spark plug wires. <laughs> Much better. Ooh, is that varnish making its way up here? I can smell it. Alright you guys, today I'm going to be pulling this TBI. I get this thing spraying again. First, I kind of want to see what's in the tank. According to the fuel gauge, it's full, so... That smells just like varnish. It's crazy. Crazy old gas. Well, I just scraped the bottom of the tank. Didn't really get anything wet on there. Uh, let me get my camera probe in there. That might be the float. Actually, let's see if I can. Try and get a camera to turn down. Yeah, I'm thinking there's nothing in there. That's good news, kinda. Means I won't have to try and drain a bunch of stuff out of the tank. Put about two gallons into the tank. Now I wanna look at this throttle body. The throttle is seized. So I'm just going to soak it with some WD. I hope that frees things up. So that's better, but it's still pretty stiff. Looks like some gas came up. All right, but that's good. That means fuel can get up to the carburetor. All right, fuel line is reattached. Let's see if uh, see if we get anything to spit through that there. Some weird uh, air noises come through though. What is that from? Well, let's give it a little boost.
There it is, a little TBI unit. Got uh, most of the grungy stuff off of this thing. Let's open up these injectors and see what I can see. Throttle position sensor. I'm uncertain if these are adjustment screws or if that's how they come out, but I don't, I'm getting to a point where I don't really want to mess with these anymore. If there's any chance of salvaging this, I, uh, I'm going to leave this somewhat intact and maybe just give it a soak. But let's put some power to these, see if they are still operational. It's clicking. The power supply doesn't like it though. Should get out the new lab. Yep, they both click. Should get out uh, the other power supply or um, get a battery on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this out to the, one of the car batteries and just see if I can watch these work. All right, after you're working that for a little bit, clicking these things on and off, I was able to finally blow through them backward. Could also be something with the computer, of course. If something's not reading right, it's not gonna send fuel or tell it to open up the injectors. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Since I brutalized the seal, I'm gonna paste it up, just put a little um, ultra black on there. I don't think I'm gonna mess around with this too much more. I've got more seals here that I can ruin. So I don't really wanna take that apart. This feels kinda of springy, must be a regulator. Um, yeah, I'll just put that back on. Next problem is uh, getting this freed up. So I'm gonna go take this outside as well and just maybe s just soak it in some oil if I got some oil I could throw in there maybe all right combination of 
three and one oil and PB blaster seem to do the trick. I was a little doubtful there at at one point. Just because it was so stiff and wasn't getting any better with the PB blaster, but mixing it up with some uh, some three and one oil. Feeling great. I love it. Oh man, that's nice. Alright. We'll fix that. Uh, let's go put the pieces back on it. All right, got the stuff all blown out on the compressor pretty good. Got some crunchies left on this gasket. Just doing my best to get any grease or oils off of here before I put on the ultra black. Q-tip's not the best for this because it leaves little fuzzies around, but I'll pick them off. Mm, couldn't find any of my uh, ultra black, so I'm just gonna use some ATV red here. High temp, should work okay. Just going to use a small amount to put on the parts where the gasket tore. back in just snug and then we'll let the uh, RTV red set let dry for one hour then tighten to torque specifications allow 24 hours to fully cure All right, I got that curing. It's gotten torqued down for its final tightening. And uh, we're just going to let that sit 24 hours.
All right, all put in, tightened down, vacuum line, vacuum lines are reattached, fuel injection connections are reattached, the injectors are reattached, uh, throttle position sensor, this uh, air bypass valve, um, 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 looking good, just need to put the battery back on and... bunch of air up in there. There's also still a chance we got a bad fuel pump, but let's put a little, a little food in the Chevy. See if we can't help with that a little bit. lot of other things like the computer system. If I had an OBD reader I'd check it right now just to see if there's anything going on. But I don't have one. Alright I just cracked both these lines. Pretty sure the bigger one is the fuel line. The fuel is not getting up here somehow. Yeah there's nothing coming out these lines. So next step would be, uh, I guess, checking the fuel pump. So I was just looking at some previous footage of this repair, and there was a very distinct sound of fluid running through this when I turned it on. So at some point, the fuel pump was working. There's usually a fuse and a relay on the firewall, but this truck seems to have its own uh, little box here. Fuel pump, fuse, ground, junction block, fuel pump relay, optional relay, ground. So it's a, there's a fuse. Okay, there's plastic nuts down here. Fuse here. And it's not blown. Let's see if it's getting power. Okay, I just got down here and went looking, and it turns out this is an OBD1. So I don't need a reader to get the codes off this. Uh, there's the plug. So I just need to short these two terminals, turn the key on, and write down the codes. 
Makes things easy. All right, got that jumper. Something to take notes on. I'll just turn the key here. Up there it is. One, one, two, so twelve. One, twelve. Twelve, I believe, is is the start and the stop of the sequence. So it's saying there's no error codes. I believe it's just flashing twelve, 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 twelve. I, I don't think there's any error codes. So I let's let's get into that fuel pump. Okay, I got two bolts, two straps, unbolted. Held on by these uh, tie downs, so we can slowly lower it. Alright, gas tank is out. And there's a crap ton more fuel in there than I thought there was. Looking in there with the sea snake, I don't think I was doing a very good job of pointing that downward. There must have been uh, just quite a bit more gas in there than I thought there was. Yeah, that thing is freaking full. This does reek of varnish. Very old gas. Yep, that's some nasty old gas in there. We should have drained this first. So we got are left with this nasty looking stuff here. It's yellow. It kinda looks like bacon grease. It actually looks like hamburger. Nasty stuck on hamburger. Hamburger grease. I wonder if that's some kind of leakage from the old gas sitting so long. Kinda smells like the varnish stuff in the tank. It smells more like wax though. Kinda like a varnishy wax. But maybe it just smells like varnish because it's right next to the. Because I'm right next to the tank here. So let's scrape this off. We'll pop the fuel pump and just see if it's it even works. All right. Just confirmed we are getting power back to the fuel pump. Which is awesome. That means that uh, very good chance. I got a, a very good feeling that all I have to do is replace this pump. So we're getting power right up to it, but no fuel pressure. Ooh, boy. Yeah, no kidding. 
Oh boy, that stinks too. Whew. Nasty. Yeah, it, uh, it looks like it exploded. Wow. So it's like I got pressure. That's why I get pressure for only a little bit. Just had just enough left on that hose to boom. Yeah, that's a good reason not to get fuel. Let's dump this old gas out of here. You know, I kind of think this is some sort of wax. The more I mess with it, the more I smell it, the more I think the varnish smell is just coming out the tank and this stuff is something else. But I don't know, maybe it is. I've never really had to deal with gas this old before. Um, so anyway, I'm cleaning up this ring, this area. Really good before I dump it, that way if I drop anything in the tank it should wash out. Five gallons and still got two in there. I think, anyway. Actually, it could be another five. All right, time to get some. Uh, let's get an old gas can. Went into town and got a new fuel pump for 75 bucks. Found one on eBay for 35 bucks. Uh, but I didn't want to wait two weeks for it to get here. So I went into town and they had one in stock. Actually, they had a couple different versions. They had this one for $75 with a five year warranty. Or there was, uh, I think, one for one, uh, $140 or something like that for a life with a lifetime warranty. New seal, new ring. Pump.
This part is no easy task, that's for sure. Helped moving that vent line over. But we got it. Now we just need to put on the uh, fill tube and the vent tube. Or the fill tube, vent tube? I don't know. The vent line, and then there's the vent tube that goes into the filler so the pump nozzle knows when to shut off. It's like a breather line for the. Sweet. So those, both those fittings are tightened up. The the uh, fuel pump output and the return line. So happy. That was the uh, that's the hardest part right there. And I just got a couple more hose clamps and the ground. Ground is connected, power connections are connected. Uh, support straps tightened, fuel lines tightened, vent lines clamped. Just need some gas. Something spring. Oh, my bad. Oh, 
forgot to hook the lines back up. Oh my gosh. Hey, at least it's working. And I uh, got all that old varnish purged out of there. Try that again. First, I'm gonna wash all this fuel off the engine. There we go. All right, gas is all cleaned up. Fuel lines reattached. Let's try that again. What else am I forgetting? Yeah, I think I'm going to tape up, just use a little electrical tape, fix this vacuum line real quick. guys. I am so happy. We don't have coolant so I can't run that too long. So awesome. Oh my gosh, it's running. Um good news too he says he'll sign it over to me if I can take it off the property so I will have to figure that one out where to bring this I clean up these pulleys put that serpentine back on or at least uh, yeah it didn't look too bad I could probably run that serpentine for a little while um, but I'll probably get a new one when I go into town for new spark plug wires since half these are torn that's why it's running so crappy. Half of these are just kind of sitting in there. Is this one of the broken ones? Yeah, you can just see that wire kind of hanging in there. It's not really... There's no more connector. It's just... Just kind of popped on there. Um, new wires, new plugs, cap and rotor. Make sure that water pump's working when we put that all back together. New air filter. Gosh, new tires, new brakes, shocks. Ooh boy, we got some videos coming. Fun project, and now I got something to take into town and get me parts for the RV. Supplies, mail stickers, sell stuff on eBay. Opened up so many options. I'll probably even go back and do some of my temp work, temp jobs. Sometimes I have really good days and I want to go work. <sighs> and I am still hired on with the temp agency, so I can, I don't, all I have to do is show up. Now I can do that. Yeah, those tires need to be addressed. I'm going to be having those popping. Can't have those popping on me. Oh, big old truck. Never had a dually before. Well, except for patches. I hear it's a really stiff ride because of that. It's got beefed up springs and suspension apparently for the towing. Yeah. 
oil change, of course. In fact, let's just stop writing that until I get the oil change trans. And you look at the trans. This looks like a gym. Old workhorse gym. Jimmy Jim. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think of that name. Either way, I'm getting attached. It's, it's, uh, it's also a 454, just like Patches. It's a, uh, I forgot what he called it. It's like a, it's a Canadian made motor and it's called a Tonawanda? Uh, the ranch owner here keeps calling it like a Tahoe motor or something, or like a, some kind of funny name motor. Anyway, they're supposed to be pretty popular. It's supposed to be a good engine. I don't know what else to say except stay tuned. Lots of videos coming up. Truck repair. Oh boy, we got. You guys know I'm gonna paint this thing. Maybe nothing too crazy. Maybe I can even. Yeah, it'd be easier just to repaint the whole thing. Debadge it. Get the stickers off. I probably have enough rattle can. Uh... Yeah, probably not of any one color though. Alright you guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.